Hey guys, it's Will here, and welcome to the second and final part of how I paint my Sides of the Emperor. Now, um, in the first part of this video, which I will try and put a link in the description to, I've done the basic paint scheme. So we have now a perfectly acceptable paint, uh, painted tabletop standard model with some freehand details, some highlighting, all the detail filled in. So uh, yeah, he's looking perfectly fine as he is. But in this part, I'm going to take it all a step further and do a lot of weathering and uh, battle damage on there. Now, not everybody's going to want to sort of have this on their models, but personally, I think it makes them look very cool, particularly um, for something like the size of the Emperor, who um, until recently were obviously a very understrength chapter, who were kind of not really having proper time to repair their armour. But uh, even, you know, for a, a Space Marine chapter that has got full access to everything it needs you know you get on the battlefield and you're going to get um get into state pretty quickly i think so i think this is a, a cool little technique to do and it's not actually as difficult as you might think there's a few different ways to do it i'm going to show you how i do mine but along the way i might sort of tell you a few sort of alternative ways you could do it um a little bit different from how i do it anyway the colors i'm going to use for this starting off with Abaddon Black, which is going to be for some general sort of chipping to the, um, the freehand details on there where the iconography is slightly worn off. Then for the actual chips and battle damage on the armour, Rhinox Hide and Runefang Steel. And finally for a bit sort of of muck and grime, we have Typhus Corrosion and finally XV88. So these are the paints I'm going to be using. And we're going to start off with our Abaddon Black. Now, the idea here is to sort of wear down the the um, iconography on here, because once you uh, get onto a battlefield, you know, that lovely detail that your uh, tech marines or whoever have uh, carefully stenciled onto your armour, that paint's going to start to wear off. So we don't sort of do this as a dry brush. What we do is get a bit of Abaddon Black on a bit of tissue paper and just brush a bit of it off using a fairly old brush. So you can see this one isn't in the best of conditions. And then we just want to sort of dab, there's probably a little bit too much on there. So just dab and scrape it in a bit of a random mishmashed way over the free hand. And this is going to make it look like the paint has just chipped a little bit, you know, that that detail is, is always is there, but it started to come away. A uh, nice little side effect of this is if your freehand isn't perfectly spot on, it will help to hide any mistakes you've made. So, uh, you know, that's a nice little, uh, little bonus of this. But there we go. You don't do too much. You want it still clear that that is the design that's on there. But just very carefully weathering that way. That's, I think, enough for that one. And you want to do it on the other side as well. You know, just to... Uh, start to make him look like he's in the thick of battle and you want this to be fairly random and sometimes that's actually harder to make it look random um, maybe I sort of have it a bit more focused on one side you don't always collapse the iconography edge there but you can still see what it's meant to be behind the chipping and damaging and um, I don't see this done very often on space marines but I've seen it a lot on orcs and I think it looks it looks good and I think uh, for this particular scheme it works nicely here. So there we go, I think that is probably enough. You just want to make sure, mm, a tad more there, make sure that it does look sort of chipped rather than you've just splattered a load of black paint over it. So you don't want to get it too thick, you know. But there we go, I am quite pleased with how that's turned out. And uh, just gonna give that a moment to dry because although it is kind of a, almost a dry brushing type technique, you don't want to sort of brush it off with your hands. So I'm gonna let that dry and then go on to the next stage. Next, we're gonna start to do the chipping on the armor, and gonna start this off with Rhinox Hide. Um, this is more of a standard painting rather than uh, like a dry brushing or anything. So you just get it on your palette like you normally would and the brush in fairly good condition and a nice point on it. And you just want to go around the model and pick out places where the, um, you know, it might have been chipped. Maybe he's uh, brushed his armour up against something. Maybe he's been, been hit by a weapon. 
Um, corner of the shoulder pads are a very good place to do this. It stands out nicely and it make, makes sense. But, you know, really anywhere on the model that could have been chipped. But you want this to look very random. You know, you end up, things don't get damaged evenly usually. They get damaged randomly, especially in the, uh, the heat of an active war zone. Apparently, I've never actually been in one, but so I hear. <laughs> and you do this on both the black and on the yellow armour as well. And you'll notice it stands out a lot more on the yellow, um, but that's okay. We'll, uh, it'll all stand out nicely by about the right amount once we've finished, because this is just the first stage of it. Um, knees, you know, knees always get scuffed and damaged. And the edges is good, but on the knees you can do like the middle of maybe one of them. Around the feet, I've actually got some of the base colour here onto the feet, so that's not a bad place to uh, to hide that. And like I was saying with the chipping damage, this can be handy for, well, you know, like the, uh, the iconography damage. It's going to be a good place to hide any mistakes, like here, I've probably overdone it a bit with the dry brushing. Uh, that's fine, we can just cover that over and then it will look like chipping damage. Also, any um, if you're working with the fine cast miniature, which tend to have a lot of imperfections in them, this would be quite a good idea for uh, hiding some of those. Um, generally, you're going to want to do more on the front than on the back, because uh, the front of the model is not only what you're going to see more of most of the, or, you know, when it's displayed and being looked at, but also you're going to get more sort of gunfire coming from the front but you can still want to do a bit on the back to tie it all together so uh, yeah the other thing to bear in mind with this is you don't want to do too much you want to uh, still keep the original scheme and you can always come back and add more later you know if you uh, do it all and then decide actually I want more you can always come back and add more but it's very hard to undo this if you want to take it away so uh, Less is more, because you can get a bit carried away. Anyway, I'm going to do a few more bits of that, then come back and show you the next part. So all the chips and scratches have now been painted in Rhinox Hide, and it's time to um, accentuate these areas a bit more. You can see they stand out quite strongly on the yellow armour. A little bit more uh, hard to see on the black, particularly on the camera, but uh, they are there. But what we're going to do is to make them pop a little bit more. Now... When GW show how to do this on their website, I don't think they use um, a black armoured model, I uh, can't remember, but uh, the way they do it is to highlight the each individual scratch with the original highlight colour for that area. So for the yellow, we'd be using Uriel Yellow. Oh, and I've knocked my model over. And for the black, we'd be using Dawnstone. However, when I tried it this way, I found because there's two different areas on the armour, it gave very different finishes to it. And I want to actually bring them all together. I mean, on the, the black, it almost looked just like a line of Dawnstone. You couldn't really see the brown too clearly. But on the yellow, it was quite clear. But what I'm going to do is bring the both colours together by finishing them off with Runefang Steel. So rather than having it sort of represent the the chips down to the base coat with the Rhinox hide and then sort of have a bit of highlight around it. Instead, these are sort of full thickness chips that go right through to the base colour. So what you want to do here is just like with, um, you know, with any scratch, you'll see that the, um, you know, the full thickness of it will only really be in the middle. So if you go to an area, I'm going to show you on the yellow because it's, uh, easier to see. So you paint this in the middle of there. So you can see now we've got the um, the Rhinox hide around the outside and the uh, Runefang steel in the middle. And you just go around the whole model doing these, catching the edges. So like here, just do it like that so you can still see some of the brown showing. And once this is done over the whole model, on both the black and yellow areas, it brings the battle damage together, so it all looks like it's the same, the same thing, you know, chips in the armour. Um, but it, it stands out as well and just looks uh, like this guy has been in a fight rather than marching around the parade ground all day. 
Okay then, so now all the chipping's done, you can see that this guy looks like he's actually, you know, in a suit of armour that's protecting him from bullets rather than just a suit of armour that is looking up, looking nice. And the final thing I want to do to give that real battlefield effect is to make him a bit mucky, you know. You don't uh, go outside in a hostile situation and stay clean for long. First colour for this is going to be Typhus Corrosion. Now this you want to use straight out of the pot. You don't, you could put a bit on a palette maybe, but you definitely don't want to water it down. You need to keep it at the consistency it is. And this kind of is halfway between a wash and a paint with um, little bits of fine grit in it as well, very fine grit. And what I'm going to do, just uh, flick back to this guy here, you can see it's kind of mostly on his legs. The idea here is that the, uh, you know, this is muck he's picked up from going through a dirty place, whether that be a ruined manufactorum or a, uh, you know, muddy puddles or whatever he's been in. You know, this is uh, dirt that he's picking up on his boots and splashing up, up his legs. So you don't want this to go too high and you don't want it to have a very sort of defined line. You want it to uh, be a little bit random, but obviously more to the bottom and very little of it going above the knees. You know, most of it will stop before the knees, maybe a tad on the knees. We don't really need to go above the knees. And the fun thing about this is that as well as making it look a bit dirty, and going into all the cracks and building up a little bit in the recesses like uh, like dirt does. It also has a slight texture to it, so once it's dry, those little bits of fine grit in there are going to give this a bit of a texture, which is going to help us in our next stage. You don't need to cover the whole boot. I've probably gone a little bit OTT there. But um, the idea is, you know, to make it look like he's been in the mud and muck and dirt of a battlefield um, and you can sort of go heavier in some places you know it sort of soaks into the cracks and lighter in others where you almost sort of take a little bit off your brush and just flick it a little bit to give the impression of more of a splash rather than a boot that's been completely in the mud in that place now this does take a while to dry so uh, i'm going to uh, give that a bit of time to dry fully and once it's done, come back and do the final stage. So with the typhus corrosion on the legs all dry, it's time to finish the model off. And for this, we're going to use XV88. I'm just going to dry brush over all the areas that we've put the typhus corrosion on. So you want to be quite gentle with this initially. And the thing you're bearing in mind is you're using, what you're trying to pick out is the texture of the typhus corrosion. Um, you're not trying to sort of highlight the edges of the boots. You're trying to highlight the the texture of the fine grit particles in the typhus corrosion. And you just want to go over the whole area, making sure not to go too heavy on this. Uh, just trying to get the light to go right. There we go. And you can see that's starting to, to build up gradually. But I'm going to finish this off off camera and then show you what it looks like when it's done. And with that done, our model is now complete. So you can see on his uh, legs there now, there's that sort of dirt and grime that's been built up across the battlefield. And he's got the chips in his armour weathering on the, uh, the symbols there. And he is all ready to go. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you haven't already, uh, then subscribe and check out my other videos. Um, this is the second painting video I've put out in a number of a couple of weeks, although uh, that's possibly a bit of a cheat because they are part one and part two of the same thing. But uh, if there's something else you'd like to see me paint, be it uh, a 40k model, Age of Sigma, Shade Spire, and it's something I might reasonably have, then uh, you know, leave a comment, uh, let me know what you'd like to see me paint, and I can uh, I can see if I can accommodate. Um, also, keep an eye out on the channel because I'm hoping to do a bat rep with my Scythes of the Emperor. Full Army is pretty much at 2,000 points now, so uh, yeah, if you're interested in seeing that, then stay tuned. You should see that soon. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.